We are at the midway point in all of the EFL playoffs. A fascinating first slate of games, and with one very notable exception, all on a knife edge with only one goal or fewer in it. Here is the current state of play going into the second legs. On Friday night, an absolute playoff shocker to start things off in League One. Third place, Sheffield Wednesday, 19 points clear in the regular season of sixth place Peterborough, but the Owls were absolutely hammered 4-0 in the first leg. Cameron Dawson fumble, let Jack Taylor open the scoring. Joe Ward's deflected second, flew in the top corner. Kwame Poku headed in a breakaway third before Johnson Clark Harris surely ended the tie ahead of leg two. It was horrific for Wednesday. Everything that could have gone wrong did as things snowballed into an awful collapse mentally, physically, tactically, competitively. Well played, of course, Peterborough. They twisted the knife and unless we get the mother, father, auntie and uncle of second leg comeback, surely posh are as good as confirmed to be at Wembley for the League One final. March tights are on Saturday and Bolton and Barnsley are going to be heading for Oakwell on Friday, all square for their second leg after a 1-1 draw at the Unibowl. Nicky Cadden briefly had Barnsley in front in the second half, but Bolton responded well, quickly got back level through Dion Charles. This looked far more like a playoff semi-final than the other side of the bracket, and Bolton also had keeper James Trafford to thank for a couple of really handy saves. I will be at Oakwell on Friday night for the second leg, so evenly poised. I just make Barnsley favourites to get through given their home form and intensity can be a lot to deal with. In truth though, there is very little in it and I would not be surprised if I was maybe 30 minutes later home than expected, if you get my drift. Into the Championship on Saturday and its advantage, Sunderland after they beat Luton 2-1 in their semi-first leg. Luton got in front early on through Adebayo, looked very comfortable actually until a worldie from Ahmad Diallo made it 1-1. Sunderland snuck in a second via Trey Hume from a short corner to set up a really juicy second leg. By most arguments, Luton had been favourites and maybe still are to get to Wembley. But that one goal lead for Sunderland really does even things up in the best possible way for the neutral. Part of me still thinks the Hatters, after two years of really strong championship work, will find what it takes to come back. But... That Sunderland away record is good. And if they can get on the score sheet, it's going to be a big uphill struggle for Luton. Beautifully poised. League 2 got underway as the final action on Saturday and Salford's 1-0 win over Stockport means the highest ranked team in all three EFL divisions all lost and will all be going into the second leg chasing a deficit. Salford have gradually got more reliant on experienced campaigner Big Matt Smith as the season has gone on. And it was him who headed home a lovely cross from Elliot Watt for the only goal in a low margin game. And that might be the issue for Stockport now. They've been League Two's most effective side for all bar the first 10 or 11 games of the season. But it has been tight and it has been low margin and they need to chase the game now. Salford have been a little more free scoring, especially away from home lately. But we did manage to draw at Edgeley Park just over a month ago in the league. And that would do. I did think Stockport would win this, but that first leg defeat has done a hell of a lot of damage. On to Sunday, and I was in attendance for Coventry versus Middlesbrough. And this was proper cagey playoff stuff. Borough were in control in the first half, but they couldn't score. And the more the clock ticked down, the more both managers accepted what is going to now be a one-off game at the Riverside in the second leg. You wouldn't imagine the pattern in game two is going to be massively different. So unless we get an early goal, it looks like a very low margin game of Russian roulette for both sides. Home advantage probably just makes Borough the favourites. And finally, Sunday night, Bradford won. Carlisle nil, over 20,000 in at Valley Parade. Sometimes... This Bradford side has struggled with the pressure of those huge home gates, but they take a lead and a clean sheet up to Carlisle for the return on Saturday. Jamie Walker grabbed the only goal midway through 
the first half. And despite Carlisle putting up some pretty reasonable numbers, no equaliser was forthcoming. And that is the big issue for Carlisle. Zero or one goals in nine of their last 12 games. Bradford will take the league two top scorer with them and will feel if they can score at Carlisle, that will likely be enough to get them to Wembley. So in summary, our normal playoff predictors are league position and home advantage. Home advantage, yes, that's held firm. Not a single away win to be found, despite Luton and Barnsley both taking a lead away from home in their ties. League position, though, is a huge, big, fat no. Not one higher-ranked team is in front. And sensationally, the third versus sixth, fourth versus seventh in League Two ties are all currently being led by the lower-ranked team in each division's competition. History tells us that normally the higher-ranked teams do get their way in the end, but we are certainly set up for at least one or more Surprises here based on league position. Performance of the round, I mean, that can only be Peter Ricant at 4-0 first league win. And story of the round, conversely, can only really be Sheffield Wednesday. In terms of individuals, Ahmed Diallo of Sunderland, Elliot Watt of Salford turned up and delivered as they have been during the season. Week two is upon us now. The context is that much clearer. All the higher ranked teams are now at home. I think we're going to get a couple of extra times across the six ties and maybe even some penalties somewhere. Let me know down there in the comments how you see the second legs playing out and maybe tell me who your six finalists are. Remember as always, head over heart, logic ahead of your cause, please. And why not stay with me for another eight minutes by clicking up here to see my account of that very, very tense KG Coventry versus Middlesbrough game yesterday at the CBS.